Working Class Beer Reviews is looking at Bell's Oberon Ale. This is a 19.2 ounce can here. Going to serve it up before we get into it. I've got a wheat beer glass. This is a wheat American wheat ale, it says, so I figured a wheat beer glass would be appropriate. So give it. Usually, wheat beers are typically very, very carbonated and fluffy. So I'm at the Bell's website. Bell's uh, Brewing Company is out of Kalamazoo, Michigan, founded in 1985. I think I've done the Two Hearted Ale. I found a tall can like this of that one time, and it's, it's an excellent beer, very highly regarded. So I'm hoping the best for this. Can't, uh, I doubt it's uh, as fresh as it needs to be. <clears throat> so flavor profile for the Oberon Ale says, bright, citrusy, spicy, hot character. Beer info, Oberon is a wheat ale that embodies everything we love about summer. We're getting pretty close to that here now. It's uh, Memorial Day 2024. A uh, brew with just wheat malt, hops, water, and our signature house ale yeast. So, only just wheat malt. That's it. Doesn't say anything about barley. Uh, hops, water, signature ale, house ale yeast. Oberon has a bright orange color and is a citrusy, smooth, and refreshing. Uh, category, limited time offer, mixed pack, Oberon variety pack, seasonal, wheat series. So, this is not year-round. Um... 5.8% alcohol by volume, shelf life, six months. So I was looking at the date, February 20th of 2024. Yeah, it's a few months out, so it's not as fresh as it, they would like it to be. Part of that's my fault. I bought this probably about a couple months back, and I've had it for a couple months in my fridge. That's what happens when I get these beers and I save them for a, a review. They get kind of stuffed to the back of the fridge, and I forget about them. And I went, I missed a spell of time. I'm trying to do some catching up and getting, working through some of these, this backlog that I've got because I don't want them getting too old. But 5.8, you know. Uh, oh, wait, okay, ingredients. Water, okay, it does have barley malt. Water, barley, wheat, hops, house ale yeast. So uh, they list the ingredients by the amount they use. So water, obviously the largest ingredient, barley, then wheat. So it does have more barley than wheat. I stand corrected. Um, 187 calories and 6.2 grams of carbs. Yeah, so not a light beer, very, very full. Um, 25 IBUs. The gravity, I don't know anything about gravity. I don't know how to describe that or how to explain it. Uh, available pack is 12 ounce, or six pack, 12 packs of 12 ounce bottles, 12 ounce cans, four packs of pint cans. They have it on draft, and you can get a five liter mini cake. Recommended glassware, they actually do not list a wheat beer glass. They do a nonic pint, which is like what you see Guinness served in, like English ales, which I find surprising. So, anyway, yeah, at least they give a pretty good description on the website. I'm sure you could also go on, uh, you know, Beer Advocate and those other web websites. So what do we get? The sun's kind of behind me now, behind these trees behind me, so... It's not real bright, but it looks like your typical wheat beer. You got the kind of like medium golden, you know, typically they're not fil heavily filtered. So the head's receded down. I could probably liven that up a little bit if I wanted to. I didn't really do a switch before. I'll switch this now, and before the end of the video, hopefully I'll have time to uh, top that off. So not as fresh. Got a little up my nose. Yeah, you do get some spice type character. I'm guessing that's from the hops, whatever hops they use, and the house ale yeast. Wheat beers, they can either have a really bright nose, which maybe when this is fresh it did, or they can have a really subdued nose. But this being on the higher side, like the wheat beers I'm used to, is in the four point something percent range. Um, Shock Top and Blue Moon are like 5.2, I think, or maybe 5.4, I can't remember. But this is 5.8, so this is almost 6%, which I like. So yeah, it, it doesn't have a really strong smell, but that may have something to do with how, you know, the age on it. But um, I'm going to go ahead and give it a sip.
Wow, it still tastes good. Yeah, it doesn't taste old or stale. Like I said, the flavors may not be as pronounced as if it was fresh. It may have more of that, what they call spicy hop character. I'm not getting that. I'm just getting a good wheat beer taste. Um, wheat beer is a good introduction into craft beer, when if you're just getting into craft beer, because it's typically pretty mild, pretty tame, and most comp most craft beer companies will make a wheat, wheat beer. I know with Boulevard here in, in Kansas City, um, you know, northwest of me, they, uh, they're they one of the most popular off offerings is their unfiltered wheat. Um, with Goose Island, they have that 314 Urban Wheat Ale. Um, some people make wheat lagers, but most people make wheat ales. Um, you know, everybody, what is it? Sierra Nevada has like the Keller Weiss, so I wanna say that might be their wheat beer. So, yeah, it's, I, I love, I love wheat beer, I really do. The Franz Sconer, if you wanna get like the OG, like German wheat beer, or European wheat beer, yeah, Franz Sconer is gonna be it. That's, that's good stuff. It's refreshing. It's not too. It's not real heavy, honestly. I, I figured with wheat beers, they kind of have that kind of full, fuller mouth feel, like real fluffy. Not like heavy, but just like a. It fills your mouth. Um, I'm not getting that. This is pretty good. I've never had this. I've seen this many, many times, and I've always just kind of passed by it, mainly because bells typically cost a little more. You know, it's 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 a more premium craft company, in my opinion. But I know their beers are, you know, rated quite well. So they have a good reputation. Um, let's see if there's anything else here on the can. Shelf life six months. Yeah, I said that on the website. Puerto Rico, do not litter. So you can litter anywhere else but Puerto Rico. And they're fine with that. Uh, brewed and canned by Bell's Brewery, Comstock, Michigan. Yeah, everything that's on the can was on the website as well. You know, these are these are pretty well becoming the standard when it comes to craft beer singles at like convenience stores or liquor stores. Um, instead of it being like a 24 ounce can, like your, you know, adjunct loggers or even 32 ounce can for some. So the this price, I think this ran me around two fifty to three dollars, somewhere in there, and I can't remember exactly which joint I bought that at. Um, can't remember if it was at a grocery store or at a or at a convenience store. But it, either way, um, yeah, I, I knew I'd want to try. Actually, I was going to save this and share it with my wife because she doesn't mind wheat beers. But I have a feeling I can find it again. She, I don't think she minds. She, I don't, I don't know if she really likes being on camera. She was on camera that one time with our friends. So I think if there's another gal with, you know, to like a wingman type thing. But I don't know if she feels comfortable, just her and I, being on camera, or else I'd have her on more often. But, uh, yeah, it's not super hazy. I've seen some of them, but like I said, let me do that swish and pour and see if more came out of the bottom. I got the bottom of the can there. Um, yeah, there is some, yeah, there's a the real fine cloud. So, yeah, there was some sediment at the bottom. So, if most wheat beers... And craft beers in general, you, you do a swish and pour at the end, you can get like the yeast and any sediment that sticks to the bottom, settles at the bottom, and uh, it just adds more character typically. Oh, carbonation. Yeah, you always get that with wheat beer. Yeah, I like, I like it a lot. Um, I would have it again. I'd probably buy another one of these. I mean, I don't know. If I knew someone that liked wheat beers, I might... If I see a six pack of it, it might be worth it. It'd probably be close to ten bucks anymore, with the way prices are now. I don't see those going down. Um, but yeah, it's summertime. This is probably you know it's it was it got up into the lower 80s today, like 80, 80 to 82 somewhere in there. It's got a nice breeze out. I'm getting ready to uh, clean up the pool, get it set up for summertime, and 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 all we dragging my feet a little bit it's, it's a bit of work money too so I pace myself 
So yeah, is this worth it? Yeah, I think so. it's worth it. I wish I would have uh, tried it fresher, but although this is the perfect weather for it. So if I would have bought it, it would have been doing early to mid spring. And uh, we kind of had a back and forth when it came to spring. It got cooled and warm up a little bit, then get cool again. You know how it does sometimes. It seemed like we had a warmer February than we had March. It was weird. But uh, anyway, yeah, now I'm just rambling about random stuff. I'm supposed to be talking about beer. Uh, if you guys have tried the Oberon Ale, I hope I'm, I'm guessing I'm saying that right, or any Bell's products for that matter, let me know in the comments what you think about it. If you're a wheat beer fan, if you're not, some people aren't, you know, and that's that's fair. You're entitled to like what you like, you know, drink what you enjoy. But uh, you know, I definitely wanted to cross this off my list. You know, I, I, Bell's is one of those brands, like I said, you can't go wrong for the most part. I've never tried anything that I haven't liked by them, but I don't get a whole, you know, full variety of what they have to offer. Obviously, if, you know, I'm in the Midwest, but I'm in the like the central Midwest. If I was in the northern Midwest where, you know, Michigan and all that stuff, I'm sure I'd see the whole, run the whole gamut of their brand because that's, you know, that's their territory. But anyway, thank you guys for watching this and uh, enjoy yourself a wheat beer. And I will see you guys later.